for, for some of you, I'm sure it's the first time you've been back in this building for over six months. So if that's you, welcome home. We're really glad to have you back here tonight. Welcome to those of you who are out there watching online. Some of you are out there with your growth group team leaders meeting in a home or somewhere else. We hope that you have a wonderful time together in fellowship, gathering around the word of Christ, encouraging each other as leaders. And for some of you out there watching at home, it's good to have you with us too. Wherever you are, it is such a good thing that we have these nights that we can come together and train one another and see each other equipped and built up to pray for each other in the vital task of leading our growth groups. This is an exciting week for us at St. Paul's, uh, just more broadly. Uh, this is the week where we are leading up to our first live stream services starting this Sunday. Uh, I'm very excited about that. The, Sam Russell and the team have all been working incredibly hard gearing up to that. And this is a bit of a sneak peek for, for those of you who are tuning in tonight. This is uh, a little taster, uh, the next in a long series of trials as we're building up to the big trial, essentially, which is this coming Sunday. So I hope that you can hear me okay. hope that you can see me. And uh, yeah, please help us and give us feedback if there's anything that we can, can fix. Yeah, we, we would love your help with these things as we work through some teething issues, I'm sure. Tonight is really a night of two halves. For this first half, you'll be tuning in here with us and, and those of us in the room as well. And there's really three main segments we will be working through from the platform. Firstly, I'm going to be speaking a little bit about why growth groups matter so much and particularly why they matter right now. I'm keen for us to help, yeah, to help all of us think well about this role that we are playing in the life and mission of our church. The second thing in is Andrew Robson will be coming up to help us understand a bit about the teaching series that is coming up for the next four weeks. We'll be working through this series at church called Gathered Now, Not Yet. And Andrew's going to come help us think about that and how we'll be involved in leading the growth group studies there. We'll have a bit of a Q&A as well. So as we go along, please feel free to text in any questions you might have, either about things I say or things that, that Andrew brings up. I have emailed out the phone number for the, the handy question phone that is here. Uh, if you'd like to write it down, you didn't get the email, the number is 0491 767 357. That's 0491 767 357. Please feel free to text in your questions. We'll get to them a little later. We're going to finish that time all together with some, some practical thinking about how you might be able to make a growth group work in what we're calling hybrid mode, where you have some people with you in the room physically and some people joining you in Zoom. There, there are a few groups out there having some wonderful successes with that. We're going to spend some time thinking about the practicalities of that. And that's what we're doing here. After that time, we'll be breaking up into our time uh, in groups for those here in the room, uh, for those who are at home with uh, a team leader, you'll be meeting in your groups as well. Uh, and if you are uh, at home alone, we're hoping you'll be able to zoom into your group as well. Lots going on, lots uh, to look forward to. And with all that in mind, we're going to pray and ask for our Heavenly Father's help with all that is coming up. So I'm going to ask Carolyn to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Loving Father, we praise you for your power, your majesty, and your care for us. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you in growth group ministry. Thank you so much that we've been able to continue to learn about you and read your word together over this crazy year. Thank you for the adaptability and hard work of all our growth group leaders in changing the way that they've led their groups and in continuing to serve you in this very, very difficult year. We thank you for the technology that we have that's enabled us to gather online when meeting physically hasn't been possible. Yet, Lord, you know that gathering online isn't the same as being here in person. So many issues can arise and it can be really difficult. Pray that you'll give wisdom to your leaders. Please help all the technology to work, for group members to love and to serve one another. And we just pray especially that you'd help the leaders to be able to encourage people to learn about you and to grow together in whichever way they're meeting. We pray for tonight, Lord. Please be with Jack and Andrew. And Lord, as this is our first live stream, we pray that you would be with all the technology and enable it all to work tonight, that we might be encouraged, we might be excited, and we might be equipped in our role as growth group leaders. And we pray all this in your dear son's name. Amen. Thanks, Carolyn. Friends, what you do as a growth group leader matters. 
As we begin tonight, I want to take some time to really think that through. I want to help you understand and appreciate just how vital your ministry among the people of St. Paul's is. That would be true in any year, but it's particularly true in the year that we are going through at the moment. I'm going to spend about 10 minutes or so walking us through a little bit about what growth group leading is and how we should be thinking about what it is we do. I want us to think about how we can do it best in the season we're into. It all starts with remembering what our mission is, and no doubt, as you are, no doubt you are aware, aware that as a church, we are on about making healthy disciples in ever-increasing number to the glory of God. That hasn't changed. Jesus Christ is still our Lord, and He has told us to go and make disciples. Heaven and hell are still real. Jesus could still be back any day now. And in these last days, we still want to pull as many people as we can out of the water and into the lifeboat that our church is. We long to see more and more people come to Jesus and find life in him. And COVID-19 has not changed any of that. And I'm sure you know that. Certainly the pandemic has brought all sorts of challenges that we're still wrestling through, but it hasn't changed our fundamental vision because that vision never changes. God gives it to us in the enduring scriptures that never change, whatever may be going on in our world. We're here to make disciples. And one of the key strategies that we have as a church in that plan to make disciples is our growth groups. We long to see all the people of our church growing in their love of God, growing in godliness, growing in love for one another, growing in knowledge, as Ephesians 4 puts it, growing to become in every respect the mature body of him who is our head, Christ. And that happens at church as we preach God's Word Sunday by Sunday, but it happens in in many crucial ways in our growth groups as well. A group of 12 or so brothers and sisters sitting together week by week, Bibles open, heads bowed in prayer, involved in each other's lives, caring for one another, loving one another. As a church, we believe this is one of the best ways that under God we can see people grow. And we as a senior staff team and as a team of growth group team leaders are immensely thankful to God for you because of just that. I can't stress enough how important all of the work that you put into growth group leading is. Your labour in prayer, your wrestling in the Bible, the time you put into leading your studies and contacting your group and organising things. What you do and who you are as a growth group leader is crucial for us seeing disciples one for Christ and us seeing disciples remain in Christ. And that's always true. But tonight I want to help us understand that growth groups are especially important right now in the midst of a pandemic. You've been hearing us say over the last three months or so that it is a time to unpack our bags. You'll remember we crashed into COVID in March. We lived out of a suitcase for a little while. But now we know that COVID isn't going away quickly, and the landscape in New South Wales, to be honest, hasn't changed an awful lot since we first started saying that about three months ago. We're still under the same restrictions now that we were then. We're still limited to 100 people meeting here in our church building, and that's not nothing. Like, we are grateful even for that. It's been wonderful to see many people return, uh, particularly in our afternoon and night services. That's been wonderful. It's immensely exciting that from this Sunday we're going to start live streaming services in this building with even more people gathering here. That, that's, that's good, and I'm excited, and many of us are. But even despite that, the sad reality is that for many of us, returning to church in person is probably still a long way away. As far as we can guess, it's unlikely that we'll be able to return to anything resembling whole congregations of 250 people gathered here on Sundays the way it used to be. And to be honest, I still find that devastating but it's the reality of life in our fallen world at the moment. And so, over the last little while, we've been trying to think through how do we unpack our suitcases and settle down for an extended stay in COVID land. We've been trying to think how we strengthen and adapt our ministries to make them more resilient, to make them able to withstand what this year and perhaps next year and who knows how long is going to look like. And live streaming and live services are part of that But I want to stress for you that growth groups are also a crucial part of us weathering this storm together. 
One of the reasons that growth groups are especially important right now is because they're our best shot at getting more of the people of our church gathering together face to face, growing in God's word. Because we can't meet in big groups of 200 or 250. But we can in groups of 10 or 12. It's not that simple, of course. You know that there are more complexities and we'll get to that as well. But one of the principles that's driving us here is that we long to see more and more people from church gathering face-to-face with other Christians around the Word of Christ. That's one of the things that we long to see. And we recognize that that can't be everyone in our church at the moment. There's still very good reasons for us to, to be cautious and for those who are more vulnerable or for those who are in regular contact with the more vulnerable. There's, there's so many good reasons that people will not be able to join us in the, in the near future in any kind of face-to-face gathering. And that's tough. And we're not, on about, we're not on about forcing anybody to come back when they don't feel ready to. But with those things said, we do want to see as many people as is possible, as many who are able, gathering face to face. I take it you know that that's important at some level. Partly because we know by, by now that Zoom is tough. I have certainly found it challenging this year leading my growth group online, and I know that many of you have too, because you've told me, and you've talked about how it is tiring, and it's harder to have the natural free-flowing conversation, and it's harder to have to feel connected. And there are good things about it, right? That There are plenty of good things that have happened this year. It's still possible to study the Bible and disciple others, and, and if that's the most that's possible for our groups at the moment, then we should keep at it and make the most of it. Because there is much good that God has done through Zoom, and he will keep doing good through it. But one of the questions I want to put to you tonight, if your growth group still is meeting only on Zoom, would you consider again whether now might be the time to have a go at meeting face-to-face? We first raised that possibility about three months ago at our last growth group leaders team, growth group leaders meeting. And a few groups decided to have a crack. And there have been groups that have been meeting face-to-face for the last term or so, and great things have been happening. If you decided back then that that wasn't right for now, would you consider again tonight whether maybe, actually, the mood has changed, maybe people in my group might be more willing to do that? If it would be safe and it would be appropriate, would you consider asking your group to have a go, to give it a try? I know that many groups are wrestling with the problem where Someone in your group, maybe one or two people, are in a a more vulnerable or a more cautious category. And for for their sake, meeting in person as a whole group just doesn't seem possible. And I want us to keep respecting that. And and as a church, we we need to especially think hard about how we're going to love those of us who are in that situation, who will be absent in the body from Christian fellowship for an extended time, because that is, is not an easy place to be. But as we keep considering how we love people like that, I want to urge us to also consider, can we have some people meeting face-to-face? If you couldn't have everyone in your group meeting in the room, could you have some? Could you consider running your group in this hybrid mode that we are going to talk a little bit more about later on? Maybe you've had a crack, maybe you've thought about it, and yeah, I trust that that's not simple either. And that's why we're going to spend some tonight thinking through the nuts and bolts of that, and also thinking through why that could be such a good thing to have a go at. Because even if it is tough and there's complexity there, that may be the best way at the moment that the most people from our church could be gathering together with other believers face-to-face around the Word of God to share that together with all of the benefits that that brings. Being together face-to-face is going to help us wrestle with the Bible better. It's easier to teach the Scriptures. Being face-to-face is going to help us to love one another through whatever hard times people may be going through. And we know that hard times are here and, and are still coming the physical sickness, but also the mental health issues, the economic and financial distress. For all sorts of reasons, one of the best things that we can do as a church is to encourage the most people as possible to be gathering together with us in the room, to love each other and build each other up, to spur each other on to love and good deeds, to spur each other on in the mission to make disciples. That mission hasn't gone away. People still need to hear about Jesus. So that's one question I want to put to you tonight. Is there some way that your group could take a step in that direction over the next few weeks? Whatever you decide is right for your group at the moment, I hope that you'll remember how important what you are doing even now, whatever that format is, 
how important that is for the mission of our church as we seek to make disciples. Friends, you as our growth group leaders are bringing the word of our Lord Jesus that gives life. We bring it to people in a year where so many are struggling. You are laboring to bring the word that brings hope when many are tempted to despair. And I want to urge you to keep going with that. I am sure at this point in the year that you are tired, you may be frustrated, you may be finding it tough. And I say that because I I am finding it tough too. So I hope that tonight we can spur one another on and pray that God would give us the strength to keep on in this vital work of making disciples. Let me wrap up this part with these words from the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. This is one of the most wonderful promises of the Bible that gives us strength to keep going in ministry. Paul writes, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let's pray that God would impress that onto our hearts, that we might give ourselves to his work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for my brothers and sisters here in the room, watching online, our growth group leaders. Thank you for the the joy, the, the wonderful privilege of partnering with you in this ministry to make disciples of the people of St. Paul's. Please help us to keep giving ourselves to that labor. Please impress upon our hearts that it is not in vain. And we pray that you would bless our work as we seek to disciple your people, that they might grow and stand firm. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we're going to move on and think a little bit about our series coming up next term. So I'm going to ask Andrew to come on up. Those in the room, we could make Andrew feel welcome. Please come on up. I'll step over here and grab this microphone. Uh, thanks for being here to help us think a little bit about the, the series that we're moving into. This is going to be a, just a pretty, pretty free-flowing kind of informal chat about what we're, what we're working through. The, the series title we've gone with is Gathered now, not yet. And what we're thinking through over the next four weeks at church is really church. We're thinking about what the Bible says about gathering, about church. And can you help us just unpack that a little bit more? What are we actually going to be looking at? What's the, what's the point of this? Where is this going? Well, um, the Bible, unsurprisingly, is full of information about church, what it's like, what it ought to be like. And um, I, was, I was saying to Jack the other day, one of the things that's really struck me as I've been preparing, I'm, I'm doing two of the talks and Dave's doing two, um, as I've been preparing for this, is the number of paradoxes that uh, church involves. Um, so we're, for example, um, called um, to be like Jesus. Um, but of course, I'm not like Jesus very often, but I am sometimes. And I'm aiming to be like Jesus. And I know that one day I will be like Jesus. And uh, by, there's, there's lots of um, uh, processes like that that have sort of the end goal. And we have perhaps the Old Testament. Then you have me and Christ now on a good day and on a bad day. And there's like a line between them. And so one of the things that we're, we're going to have a think about is um, uh, in the first talk um, is we're going to be looking at the trajectory of the Old Testament through Christ, through the New Testament, to us and to eternity. And uh, so if you look at um, a passage like uh, Ezekiel 36, um, where it talks about God realising and knowing full well, because he did it, that he's scattering the Israelites, but then promising that he will take them out of the nations, he will gather them back from the countries, bring them back, sprinkle clean water on you, you will be clean, I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols and I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And There's this whole idea, and it goes on, but um, there's this whole idea that God from the beginning has a plan for restoration and it involves reversing scattering. So God is about gathering us together. And so I think capturing the truth of that and thinking into 
the truth that God's purpose in saving us is to gather us to be a people for his very own, eager to do what is good, and there's many other descriptions of it, that that is very close to God's heart. And so what we're going through right now is, um, I think, I was trying to think of a way to to express it, I I think it's something of a, a stealth calamity for us. I think it's probably worse than we realise what's going on. The fact that we've been scattered and the, the, the degree to which it's, it's impacted people. And I think, I think what the, the scriptures call us to is to um, push against the scattering and push into the gathering. And that's tough. And there's a whole lot to unpack with that. Yeah, so we've got this trajectory through the Bible. You've got scattering. I mean, yeah, you pointed to Ezekiel. You look at somewhere like the Tower of Babel. We've got scattering as kind of God's judgment there. Yeah, kicking them out of the uh, the garden in chapter uh, chapter three of Genesis. Yeah, that's right. So we go back even earlier. Yeah. yeah. So you have this this moving towards gathering. That's kind of what we're we're, we're working towards. That's like, I guess kind of the part of the guiding principle. Um, how does that sort of affect us? Like, what are some of the I guess, areas of life, areas of thinking about church. Yeah, where are we going to press into, you know, working from these gathering kind of ideas? Yeah, so um, a a couple of things we'll be thinking about is what kind of church do we want to be? Um, So we'll be thinking about who we are to each other. Um, We'll be thinking about who we are to the world around us. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that the, the gathering of God's people, the church, now... Um, transmits to um, the, 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 pa- the heavenly powers, whatever they are, some kind of uh, uh, thing in opposition to God, we think, that God is victorious. The, f- the way that he can unite humanity in Christ trumpets his glory. And, and so our gathering is important at that level. Our gathering is important for each other. It's important for us to be gathered so that we can encourage each other all the more as we see the day approaching. Um, it's important too, I think, within the context of all of that, and, and this will be um, the fourth talk in our series, is to think into the reality of what that means. So we're pushing against the, um, the, the, the scattering impulse that's happening. We're trying to gather. We're gathering for each other's sake. We're gathering for God's sake and for God's purpose. But it's going to be hard. And I think one of the things we need to do is steal ourselves to struggle to get out from under the doona, amongst other things. Um, Let's uh, let's tease that out a little bit. So you're saying we've got to push against the kind of the scattering impulse Mm. and that's going to be hard. What are some of the reasons that that it is hard? What what are we up against and how how are we going to work through some of those things in this series? Well, let me read um, Mark chapter 8. This is a passage you'll all know well. Mark 8 from verse 34. Then he called, this is Jesus, then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. So what I think that passage tells us is that one of my biggest um, challenges or enemies is me. Mm. Is my desire not to take up my cross and follow Jesus, my desire to have it easy, have it easier. Um, that's, that's, I, I can testify that's a deep impulse in me. And uh, I have to push against it. I know it's true of all of you as well. Um, you have to push against that, that impulse. So, so for me, myself, uh, I have to push against myself. It also tells us that following Jesus will be tough and it will involve sacrifice. It will involve self-denial. And so, a- again, we need to sort of steel ourselves to do that, to, to do the costly thing, to do something that's out of our comfort zone, to push ourselves to do that next thing um, that we might not want to do, you know? Yeah, I feel like there's all sorts of ways that just in myself that those things have bubbled up in the last little while. So, you know, there are days when I feel like 
the idea of logging onto Zoom one more time is almost untenable, and mm. the temptation is so strong to I've been there, you know, chuck a sickie or something, right? <laughs> like there's a there's a selfishness in me that needs to be put to yeah. death at the feet yeah. of Jesus and His cross. I've I've seen it in uh, you know sometimes it's about wearing masks. It's you know like sitting around a church for a couple of hours. It's you know it's it's hot. It's uncomfortable. Like mm. there's you know. It, there's something that I'm pushing against there in terms of my selfishness that actually for the sake of others, for the sake of love, mm. that's a good thing to do. Again, following Jesus who's called us to, yeah. to deny ourselves and, you know, crucify ourselves along with him. And I mean, obviously all of this stuff is not different to um, normal at one level. The manifestations of this struggle is different now. Um, but, you know, the struggle of being together and living for one another as, as Christ's disciples is, um, is always hard. It's always hard. You know, we all know there's the people who are easier to love and then there's the people we don't get on with as well. Um, there's the people who are harder, you know. And that, that's always the case and, and we, we continue to do that. And, and, you know, now perhaps there's other issues, you know. There'll be, there'll be the person who you think is a hypochondriac, the person who you think, what are they worried about? Or, you know, or... If you're wired the other way, there'll be those cavalier people who are disregarding, you know. So you, you, you've got all of that going on and we've got to work out how to love each other in normally, as, as always, but now we've got these extra things we've got to start thinking about. How do we love each other now in a time like this? One of the things we said early on um, and uh, very early on in, in this pandemic was we, when we were quite afraid that we were going to hit sort of Italy type situation with bodies in the streets and that kind of thing, was, was we, we were thinking into how do we love each other in calamity, in economic calamity, in a health calamity. Now, it seems like the health calamity is not going to happen like that here um, unless the virus mutates or something. But the economic calamity, I think, is already with us. And um, I think that will cause trouble for people. So I think that's a, an element of loving our brothers and sisters, loving our neighbours too, that might stretch us in the coming years as, as the impact of all that's happened starts to work its way through. Yeah, I think that our kind of, you know, almost like narrative of, of what Christian discipleship looks like, of the ways we're meant to love each other. In the old world, we all kind of got a sense of that. If you've been Christian for a while, we talk about the same kinds of things, you know, what loving people are, looks like, you know, it's talking to the person who's on their own. It's, we had this kind of stock set of ideas. Now it's suddenly a world where we have all these new situations and we need to think, yeah, actually, how do we love each other and deny ourselves? And that's really what this series is about. This is why we want to tackle this now because we've had six months of new problems and we need to do some hard work thinking mm. through what the scriptures say about the church has to apply to where we're at now. And I think the time issue is an important one. So I think the fact that we, it's pretty clear that this is no longer a blip, you know, a, a quick season that'll be over and, you know, what do they call it, the V-shaped recovery and all that. That's not happening. That's not, as Jack was saying before. I think that itself, the, the recalibration that that will bring, and, and I, you know, um, some will testify that I, I sometimes have a more pe pessimistic disposition, but... Um, no, who would, who would <laughs> think that, Andrew? But uh, <laughs> I, I'm concerned that this thing could drag on for quite a while. And uh, I think that will do things to our heads and, and we'll need to think about what it means if this thing goes on for years instead of months more. And um, you know, how we love each other, because as Jack was saying before, the people who can't come to church... If you can't come to church for a month or two in a crisis, that's one thing. But if you can't come to church for years, that's more than a crisis, isn't it? That's, that, that, as I said, it's a, it's a calamity. And so we've got to think about how we love people in those situations. What do we do? How do we respond? And I think the longer the time horizon is, the more we have to think um, more creatively and more innovatively about how do we respond to this. Yeah, really helpful. I hope that gives you a sense of the kinds of issues we're going to be digging into in the sermons on Sunday uh, and growth groups as well, the kinds of questions that may bubble up and that you may want to throw around with your group. It might be helpful now, uh, can you give us a sense of kind of the, the movement of the series? So we have yep. four talks, four studies following them. What are, what are the four things that we're going to be focusing on over those weeks? Yep. Um, so uh, talk one, and we're still working on titles and things, but um, uh, the church at the end is what I've called it. Um, so the idea of, uh, of where we're going and where we've come from 
and that line that I was speaking of. So sort of drawing a line through the Old Testament, through the New Testament to us and thinking about um, who are we, where are we going and what, what's the nature of the church. And, and, and um, I think very important pastorally is understanding that trajectory that we're moving towards perfection but we're not there yet. But just as my work on being Christ-like, I don't, I don't process my work on being Christ-like and say, um, well, I'm not going to be Christ-like in this life, in this life so I'm going to give up. What I say is, no, I'm going to strive to be Christ-like and I know I'll get there in the end. Likewise with church. We know church will be perfect in the end. We'll be gathered around the throne of the Lamb. But, and we know that now is not going to be perfect. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't strive and the Spirit won't let us not strive to make church as good as we can make it, um, to, to push and to strive to make it as good as we can given the circumstances we're in. So that's talk one. Talk two, um, what church do we want to be? Um, so we'll be thinking about um, the, the Great Commission uh, and, and uh, um, you know, go forth and make disciples in my name. Uh, and um, we'll be thinking, yeah, what kind of church do we want to be? We'll be thinking about going deep, going wide, so reaching out and doing it all for God's glory. Um, talk three, we'll be thinking about the church and the fact that we need each other. So we'll be looking particularly at Ephesians 2, 3 and 4 um, and thinking through some of those paradoxes I mentioned before, the paradoxes that are in church life and how we process those. Um, and um, you know, particularly thinking about it, the each otherness of church. And then um, talk four, uh, we're thinking about the church characterised by sacrifice. So we'll be looking at um, some of those passages that, that call us to sacrifice and thinking into what does that mean, what does that mean in this season. So that's the flow. Helpful, yeah. So we're kind of starting at the end, starting backwards, if you like, starting where we're going, because that's you know that has to shape where we are in the now. Then thinking about uh, what we're on about now, the making disciples stuff, like really, you know, I think it's been so easy this year to lose the sense of urgency of mission. I've certainly found that myself. Mm. So we want to put that back on the agenda. That's, that's still what we're on about. That's, that's the, the number one thing. And that affects how we relate to each other in the third talk. And that means we have to deny ourselves in the fourth one. That's kind of the, mm. the shape of where we're going. Mm. Actually, I missed that before. I think, I think that, that dynamic's right. Uh, it just the COVID's changed a lot of things. One of the things that really has shaken up is mission. And um, you would think that an event like this would cause a great hunger for the gospel. And I suspect deep down it perhaps has, but we've got to work out new ways of connecting with people so that we can um, tell them the good news. Yeah, and that's a helpful thing to say, I think, like that's going to characterise a lot of this series, that the mission has not changed in that we're still on about making disciples but the mission has changed in how we do that and how we give expression to that. Yeah. So, yeah, there's some of the dynamics we're going to be working So we're through. hoping to, to, to resolve some tensions and some questions, but my guess is we'll, we'll raise a lot of questions without answers too and that they literally will be the things we need to be thinking and praying and struggling with for some time to come. Yeah. As we talked about this the other day, I think we got the sense that we're, we're coming to this series as a staff team, not with all the settled answers. Like, we're not saying, we, you know, it's not like we've kind of sat in our studies for six months and like, all right, we've really nailed the doctrine of church stuff. We're ready to finally present the final settled, this is what church should look like. Like, we, we think this is a conversation we, we must start. Mm. And we think now is the time to start it. So there, there are issues that we are still thinking through in a sense. Mm. And yeah, we, we want to go to the scriptures. We want to see what God has to say and thinking through what that means for us now. We, we want to bring you on that journey, essentially. So we're hoping that growth groups be a time where, as a whole church, we can be really wrestling through these things, yeah. We don't think that we have all the answers. We think that many of the answers the church needs are out there among you, among our groups, and we're keen for, for that conversation to happen in our groups mm -hmm. as well. And that's probably a good point to, to talk about the group. So can you help us get a sense of what uh, is our growth group material going to look like and how can we as leaders prepare well for these sets of studies? Yep. Um, so you'll get... Um, some materials uh, by Friday of uh, the, the week before your study. And the idea this time around is um, that the studies will follow the talks. So normally we do it the other way around. So we, we have the study first, then the sermon. But this time we're going to do it the other way around. And, and as Jack's saying, we're going to raise a whole lot of questions in the sermons. And um, we're hoping that, that, that chewing into that stuff 
will be really helpful in your group. And some of what Jack was saying there, you know, you guys may well come up with um, some of the, the good solutions that we need uh, as you talk. And, and so um, we think um, th that's a good way to do this particular series of four um, is to, to follow. So you'll get some materials. Um, they'll have some um, Bible passages. We'll give you one or two passages or maybe three, but we'll try and manage it down so we won't give you giant screeds of text to read. Um, we'll give you passages to think into that will key with what people have heard and then um, uh, we, we hope that that's fruitful discussion for people as they think into. I think the growth groups are the, uh, are the place for thinking into how, how do we do this in the COVID world, in the new world? What's, what's changed? What's the same? How do we respond? I think that's the stuff of the, the group discussions and prayers. And particularly, it'll be focused on your group. So as I was saying before, we, we really believe that growth groups are such a critical part of our whole discipleship strategy at church at the moment. So one of the things we want to impress in your group times is for your group to be thinking about how do we as a group actually encourage each other to stand firm despite the, the, the crisis that's going on? How do we each, you know, be on about the mission and be continuing to share the gospel, those kinds of things? So really keen to drill into the application for your group and the, the people in your group's lives. Yeah, we hope that's going to be good and helpful. I think it's helpful for people just to to, to um, talk about the uncertainty, talk about the fears, talk about the concerns. I think that is helpful in itself for people. Um, but also I think it's fruitful to hear what other people are thinking and saying and and see if we can move forward together. Yeah. So just to help you again understand the shape of the term, I sent this out in an email a few weeks ago, so please go have a look at that again. But uh, this first week of term, so we won't have any growth group meal material provided and we're encouraging you to, to do something social with your group get together if you can we'll have some kind of prayer and sharing night the next four weeks we'll be following these studies which follow on after the sermon and then from week six onwards we'll be getting into our next series beyond this which is in the gospel of matthew and we, we will be sending out some material for matthew that'll be coming out uh, most likely in the first week of november a couple of weeks before the matthew studies start that's the shape of where we're going thank you so much for helping us to, to get a feel for that at this point, I'm keen to open up for questions. If you're here in the room, feel free to just whack up your hand and, and ask a question, and I'm going to check the, the text line and see those questions that have started to, to come on this way. While I'm just working the phone, any, any questions out there in the room about what we've said so far? Mm. Mm. Is that, has that always been the idea since the past? Well, I think the, the impulse... Oh, sorry. Um, the, the question is the pushing against the scattering phrase that I use. That's a new phrase um, that Monique hasn't heard before. Has that always been there? Have we missed something? I think um, that the reversal of the scattering to the gathering... That dynamic is very much there in scripture. And I think what's going on at the moment is an external stressor that's acting to actually scatter us. And so I think we, we, we given what goal, God's goal is to gather us, that um, as best we can, we ought to struggle against that scattering and try to gather. So sometimes it's easier than other times to gather. Um, and, um, you know, in some places, in some ages, in some times, it's harder than others. And I think we're in a time now where it's harder. And so I think pushing against that is, is right. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll dig into that more and, and, and think a little more in, in, in talk one, which is this Sunday. Yep. So, so hey, I'll just repeat the question. Yep. So Nick's asking, 
we've been talking about gathering and you know I was talking about the importance of getting together face to face uh, Nick's pointed out that for his group uh, since uh, being on zoom they've had far better attendance than ever before and I guess there's all sorts of reasons for that and I think many of us have experienced the same you know you, you, you don't have to miss the group just because you got a sniffle you can stay at home and still jump on you know you don't have to drive out in the cold all those sorts of reasons mm. so I guess it, so is the question how do we think about the you know is it so bad is that kind of what you're asking Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. So theologically, how do we distinguish between gathering online versus gathering in person? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great question. It's the question of the moment. Um, I think um, just from first principles, uh, gathering is gathering physically. I, I think that's the case but then the question is what is going on as we gather virtually you know when when I um talk to Alan face to face um it's qualitatively better than when I ring Alan on the phone but when I ring Alan on the phone I'm still talking to Alan um but it's qualitatively better if we catch up and talk but talking on the phone is still talking on the phone and so I think we we, we want to kind of um but it's going to require a bit of nuance and a bit of thinking but I think where we want to land is somewhere like um, meeting together physically is better than the meeting together virtually if we can do it. But where we can't, we don't want to be despising the, um, the gathering that we can do online. It's a good thing. It's a retrieval uh, ethic. Um, it, it's, it's something that retrieves from uh, the problems of a fallen world something good. Um, but it's not the ideal it's, it's not kind of what we're meant to do. Um, it, it's a thing that's technologically enabled and we're grateful for it. Because can you imagine if this had happened in 1984 instead of now, um, where all we had was the phone with the, the rolling thing. I mean, some people may not even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, um, you know, back then things would have been very, very hard. So we, we're grateful for the technology that we've got. And um, I, I think we're going to have to dig into some of those issues a little bit. Because you're quite right, it's, it's, it's a tricky one to tease apart. But I think when you really think about it, um, at its heart, gathering physically is what we're called to do. And we know it's best. But yes, other things are, um, are things that are, are good to do when we can't gather physically. But we wouldn't want, and this is where that trajectory that I was talking about from the Old Testament to eternity... Um, comes in, we wouldn't want the, the sort of the sense of the inferior to, to, to settle for something lesser when something better is available. Um, I, I think that kind of dynamic is what we'll be thinking into. Helpful, thank you. We'll go to a question from the text line. We're thinking, talking a bit about growing the church. This question has, an, has asked, how does growing the church in numbers work in the environment we're in? How do we think about more people coming into whatever it is we're calling church at the moment. Yeah, great question, because we don't really want them, do we? So they bring germs. They'll bring germs, they won't know how to wear a mask. And, and yet yeah. we do want them. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> so um, I, I think, I, I don't know, if, I was actually literally thinking about this question the other day myself. What do we do? Because we're limited to 100 people and we're selling tickets, you know, as we were joking before, you know, did you get the good tickets or, you know, where are you going to be sitting and all that. How do, how, do we, how do we make space for new people? But we know we must. We know we must reach out to the outsider. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that there'll be many people, even living near here, who will be wanting the gospel at this point. We'll be thinking, this world is messed up. I need some answers. And we've got the answers. How do we get those answers to them? Um, do we set up new formats? Do we use the digital world in new ways do we run events do we start walking around on trains with masks on talking to people do we what do we do i think it's a brilliant question i've got only sketch answers for it 
And again, as your groups talk, your you know your people are the people who are there out in the out in the online universities and out in the working from home online workplaces. And we're keen to hear from our whole church. What can we do? And I think that's where some of that struggle comes in too, because we're knocked flat. Like I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I do sometimes feel quite flat in this time. And and when I think about church and only a hundred and all the people are trying to fit in, I think oh, all this work and we're going to get a hundred people in the building and it. it you feel flat, and and I think I think um, so I think part of that struggling against um, my own self and my own comfort is to push through that and say no. What do, we're going to get on the front foot? What are we going to do? Rather, because I, I think the problem with mission, particularly, is just going to be us sitting on our backsides because we're just exhausted, and so that's possibly one of the biggest struggles. Yeah, helpful to point that out. I think. Um, we'll take one last question. This is from the text line as well. Someone has asked, are there any resources that you'd recommend, books and so forth, as we head towards this series? Um, that's a good question. I hadn't thought of a, an answer for it. Um, I guess it's different to a normal series in that we can't yeah. just give you a kind of point you to a commentary to say this is the part of the Bible the looking at that kind book. of thing. Um, Look, there's a few websites that are coming to my mind. Um, yeah, what are those? W- one of them is um, the Katoomba Convention. People have, have put together an app which has a whole lot of talks and things on it. Um, I think many of those talks will be very helpful, although I've, I think I've only listened to half of one. <laughs> um, I think um, the Pastor's Heart mm. um, uh, video series, if you just Google that, um, Pastor's Heart. Um, that's a thing run in Sydney, and and there's all kinds of um, interesting. Yeah, it's a uh, podcast. Podcast. There's yeah. been all kinds of interesting um, uh, speakers on there, different leaders from the church in Sydney, talking about different aspects of struggling with COVID. And you can go right back to sort of March, April, and see the initial panicked responses. And um, you Amazing get a few. To see how far we've come when you look back at those yeah, early yeah. ones. Yeah. You get a few episodes with Gary featuring as the COVID <laughs> bishop. So, um, yeah, that, that, those things are good. But, yeah, that, that'd be my, my hip shot. Have you got any thoughts? Yeah, a few other things that come to mind. A, a couple of the lecturers at Moore College have been doing some great thinking in this space. So if you look into blog posts or videos by two guys, Chase Kuhn or Lionel Windsor, there's some resources that really help me think through a bunch of these things. The other thing is uh, our, our very own Tony Payne uh, has been doing mm. some great thinking in this space as well. So if you check out his online journal, The Painful Truth, uh, just Google that, uh, and his series, Essential Services. That's something that's really helped me think through a bunch of this this Doctrine of mm. Church stuff this year as well. Yep. Yeah, thanks so much for answering questions and walking us through the series. No really helpful, yeah, and we're looking forward to getting into the Word on, on Sunday. Thank you, Andrew. No we're going to keep moving on and spend a bit of time now thinking about this whole question of the hybrid group that we have touched on a little, uh, thank you, uh, from time to time tonight. One of the things that I think can be challenging, it's been challenging for me as I even think about what would it even look like for me to meet with some people in the room and some people on Zoom. And to start with, one of the things I wanted to do was to just help show you uh, and give you a sense of what one group, uh, well, two groups actually we're going to see. But first, we're going to watch a video. This is a video that uh, one of our growth groups has made for us. This is Ross and Ann Abraham uh, and one of the, uh, the morning church growth groups that they lead. They've given us two minutes of footage on what their hybrid growth group looks like at the moment. So we'll, we'll, we'll get that video to you on the stream and on the screens in the room. Hi, everyone. This is our lounge room, and this is where we do growth group. And we have some people who are here in the flesh, and we have a whole bunch of other people who are here in Zoom land. Give us a wave, please, folks. Good one. All right. How does this work? We have two computers. One that's facing the leader. So that's where the leader sits. So one is facing the leader and the leader sees the screen with everyone on it. And we have another one facing the the group members. So the group members can see who's in the room with the leader and who's off in Zoom land. Mm -hmm. So how does this work? Two computers. This computer, it's only a camera and a video, so the sound is muted, both microphone, 
and speaker. This computer, uh, there's the camera is working, the screen is working, the microphone is working, and the speaker is working. So this computer is in the middle of the room, which everyone can speak into who's present in the room, and everyone in the room can hear, and that means we've got people in the room and people on Zoom, and we're encouraging one another in the scriptures and to walk with Christ. And we'd all be rather much better prefer if we could all be together, but in this day of COVID, this is what we're doing and it seems to work. Hope it helps. Thank you. That's obviously a very brief look at, sorry, I need to choose which microphone I'm using, a very brief look at uh, what that looks like. And this part of the video will be available on YouTube uh, after we finish. So if you want to go back and have a look at that and just see what that simple text set, setup looks like, there's an example of what it could look like. One of the things that many people have discovered in the last while is that, that MacBooks in particular seem to have amazing microphones. And those who have a MacBook seem to be able to just plonk in the middle of the room. You don't need any other technology, basically, to be able to make it so everyone can hear. And audio really is the, the key issue when you have this group conversation, making someone able to hear, that's a factor. So if you're an Apple person, it's, it's, it's finally come good as someone who's not an Apple person might, you know, throw in the mix. We're going to hear from someone else now. I'm going to invite Peter Knight up, uh, who's also been working in hybrid land to give us a bit of an insight into how his group is looking as well. Would you make Peter welcome? Glad to have you with us, Peter. Uh, we'd love to hear a bit about your growth group, uh, what it's looking like, what that format is at the moment. Sure. Uh, look, hey, it's great to be here. And, um, yeah, and it is a big challenge for a uh, house group to be in half in half. I think for some people they, they feel <coughs> yeah, very isolated at home. Perhaps coming to house group, uh, growth group is pretty well the only thing that they are prepared to get out and do. And when they do come, it kind of heightens the experience that they have in that. Others, you know, perhaps if they're in larger family groups or whatever, possibly don't need that human contact quite as much. So I think as time goes on, we will find more and more that the groups end up at hybrid. And, uh, you know, there's some real challenges about that. Yeah. There are, yeah. So can you mm. give us a bit of a mm. sense? I mean, we have some of the photos you sent me as well, if, if that's helpful. Yeah, can you talk us through a little bit about... Yeah, what's going on? How, yeah, how does it feel in the room for your group? Yeah, so excuse the mess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so look, I think the, the thing is that uh, if you just have a, um, a, 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 the computer and the people are all on their own, it can be very hard for the group as a whole to see the people on Zoom and to kind of connect with them. So um, in terms of having the two uh, relate together, I would say that... Probably, you know, from if you're going to say we improve it from, you know, 50 to 70, perhaps that's the range that we're looking at improving it. Um, 65, or, you know, to get the biggest change is if you can use your TV or uh, rather than just a computer screen. Yeah, so having people there, like, on the TV, yeah. you know, basically life-size as opposed yeah. to kind of They're life -size. dwarf size. You can yeah. plug just with a normal HDMI cord, you can plug it from your computer into the TV, you don't just have the horrible sound that comes from a laptop, you've got um, the sound that comes from a TV, a lot more control over it. They're full size, people can kind of see them interacting a bit more. And, um, you know, that's something that almost any group can do to, you know, uh, just get a cord, plug it into the TV and use that. Yeah, yeah helpful. <laughs> Tech's obviously a part of it. And if you have specific questions about tech, feel free to get in touch with your team leaders and we'd love to help connect you with the connect you with the cables but connect you with the right people who might be able to help you make it work it's more than just tech though isn't it could you help us understand how does the hybrid model change the way that you lead your group yeah look I think um, people can feel very left out in the in, in zoom land uh, if uh, if the sort of the whole conversations happening down one end of the room uh, we're all 1.5 meters apart it can be quite a long time for uh, I didn't realise Mac uh, microphones were so good, but we, we got a couple of these microphones, they're called room mics, rather than um, just the microphone on my uh, computer. Um, you know, I'd say they improved it, you know, another five, maybe 10%, so every percent that you get is good. 
Um, but if you can't get one of these, uh, that's still fine. But we kind of scattered them throughout the room and I mean there is a photo up there where <coughs> sometimes I do go a little bit over the top. And um, <coughs> you know, I got a few mics in there and uh, we, we decided... It's aspirational, this is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the thing is too, we decided that we'd put people right down at the far end of the room because if they're all nice in a nice group just 1.5 metres apart, they tend to speak normally and it doesn't come out as clearly through the mic. But if you send them off, even to speak to me, they've got to kind of lift their voice and project it. And look, it's all just trying to find little things that improve the experience of people that are on Zoom and, and people uh, who, who are in the room. Yeah. yeah, so I'm hearing a part there, it's mm -hmm. kind of changing the group dynamic and modelling and helping to understand your group, realise they need to project so that everyone can hear, because hearing's important. Yeah. Um, do you do things like direct questions at the people on Zoom? How do you include the Zoomers in the conversation? Yeah, I think it's really quite difficult because, you know, different people are quiet and, and perhaps uh, they're on Zoom, they, they, they don't uh, want to come to the house group or don't feel that urgency as much and they can definitely feel left out. And, um, you know, in a house group you can catch their eye, you've got a lot of ways that you can kind of say to them, what do you think? Uh, but I think leading a house group, a growth group, in um, when when you're on it, you'd, you'd have to say their name a lot more, and you know, I try to give them a bit of warning. I say, you know, like, yeah, I've got, I'm going to get a few answers in the group, but then I want to hear what Rick's got to say, or I want to hear what uh, they've got to say, and just kind of make sure that they've connected with the question, that they've maybe given a little bit of thought, because um, yeah, I. I, I I personally find it difficult on Zoom if I'm doing some sort of webinar or whatever and they're just rambling on and on and on just to concentrate, you know. And then they ask you a question that's right, oh, yes, I should be here. Um, so, yeah, trying to find ways to connect with them on, on uh, uh, verbally is really important. Yeah, fantastic, thank you. <laughs> um, last thing quickly, yeah. is it worth it? How are you finding that the, this dynamic is, is helping? Yeah, look... I, I think house group is even more important and people feel it's more important than, than they did before. Um, I, I like the fact you mentioned that you have 100% attendance. I think when you can't attend so many things, when you're not allowed to go on travel so many distances, when you know so much more isolated and in church, even the little bit of connection that you get is, is valuable and people really value that more. And yeah, my experience is it, that if they turn up, that that ratchets it up more and uh, you know we've got a few people that still um, you know 80% of the time uh, one person in particular I've got in mind that w might do it from home but when he turns up he says oh it's so much better when I'm here and and I think that, that there is that sense that um, that it's an investment it's worth it and uh, yeah let's see how your group goes yeah <laughs> thanks so much for sharing that really appreciate you giving us an insight yeah god bless as you keep leading a group that way thanks Peter I hope that gives you is some, some things perhaps to try, uh, maybe, yeah, has spurred your Im imagination a little bit as you think about what it could look like for your group to, to perhaps do something similar in the coming weeks and months. It's about time for us to wrap up this central streamed part of the night. Uh, I hope that there's been lots of uh, thought-provoking things you've heard from the front tonight. I hope there's plenty to talk about. And we are going to head in some time in our groups to have that discussion. If you are here in the room, uh, we're going to meet with our, our teams soon uh, and look forward to that. If you're watching at home online and you are in the room with your team leaders, then of course that's where you're going to be having that chat as well. And if you're watching online at home, uh, we hope that provision has been made for you to join via Zoom uh, in one of those team leader meetings happening at home. For many of us, this may be the first experience of a hybrid kind of group, and I hope even this discussion as we talk about these things might give you a sense of what it could look like. I'm going to pray before we head off and, and disperse into those discussions. Uh, let's, let's thank God and, and ask for his help as we go out in the term ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've made provision for us to, to meet some here in the room, some on the technology. Thank you for the gift of technology and all that it enables. We pray that you'd help us as we think about how we can best lead our groups in this environment. Whatever format we may take, uh, we pray that you would help the people in our groups to grow in their love for Jesus, to grow in their, their love for the lost and their passion to share Christ with them would grow in their faith that they might stand firm. And we pray that for ourselves as well. Uh, please keep growing us more and more like your son, Jesus Christ. 
And we pray these things in his name. Amen. We hope that your discussion is a fruitful time uh, from us here in the room. That's uh, good night and God bless, and we'll see you later. For those in the